Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing today? Welcome back to yoga. Just a little reminder of where we are in the scheme of things. Um, this is the fifth of the six week block. So we've got this class and another week to go. Um, I have decided to take a summer break, but I'm going to be launching a weekly class on my YouTube channel instead. So you will still get weekly yoga. Um, in fact, I could even launch it at the same time, 12 o'clock on a Monday. Um, but it'll be a, a pre-recorded class from the past year. But we've got two more to go. And if you remember, we've been working up the six main energy centres of the body. I've done a little bit of reading on this over the last few weeks. And the chakras, as they are commonly known, have morphed over time to become something almost like the colours of the rainbow. Um, originally, they were never really meant as that. Um, and it's a, an interesting example of how we should really treat some of this philosophy with, you know, uh, not, not scepticism, but just be questioning about some of it. Um, it's lovely to embrace things as well when ideas really resonate with you. There's absolutely no harm in that either. Now, we're working today with the throat chakra. Um, this is said to be um, an area that's associated with communication. And as I need to remind myself, good communication is also about good listening. So listening is kind of today's theme, okay? And we're going to facilitate that through the ocean breath in the throat. And I hope you enjoy the next 40 minutes of yoga. We're going to come up to standing to do two rounds of our familiar sun salutation. We did it last week with a little breath practice um, throughout and a little tweak within. So come to your feet. Come to the head of your mat. Just take a little look around you. Maybe lift the heels and pivot the hips. Lift the heels, pivot the hips. And maybe just allow a little bit of a twist in the waist. Wrap the arms around the waist too. I think my head's disappeared, but that's okay. You don't need to see my head. And allow your arms to be loose and free by the side of the body. So come with me as you drift your arms out to the side and up above the head and draw the chest towards the chin. Remember the heart space we worked on last week? That's the sort of opening of this area. And then we come into a forward bend as we exhale. Take a little inhale as you billow your arms out to the side. And if you're jumping back into plank, come with me. Come into this funny little perch. Plant your hands and jump back with the feet. Turn the inside of your elbows so they face towards the end of your mat. And touch down, feet back. Inhale for cobra, heart to chin again. Downward dog, toes tuck under, fold nicely into the hips and then step forward with your right foot and turn your back foot out, warrior pose. Place your hands towards your heart. Come with me with three deep breaths. We're going to unfurl to your right, inhaling, exhaling, palms back together again, inhaling, and exhaling. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Let's just get tuned into the breath's rhythm. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back to plank. Lower. Inhale, cobra. Downward dog. Exhale. Really tune into the direction of your breath. Inhale, left foot forward. Lift the arms, exhale, palms to chest. Come with me again, unfurling, inhaling. 
exhaling inhaling exhaling inhaling exhaling breath in and look up arms up exhale come forward plank and inhale for cobra down dog as we exhale and inhale step or jump forward look up exhale release deep knees high tailbone relax neck arms out to the side as we take a deep breath in palms together exhale drop the arms by the side of the body in tadasana mountain pose and make a little resolve to yourself to try to cultivate a stronger breath in the throat. This is one of the staple diets of yoga. It's also a pranayama, which really does go back to the roots of yoga. It's a gentle contraction with the back of the throat. <sighs> oh, this is if you're making a ha sound through closed lips. It resonates, it echoes, it vibrates. Where we land our attention, we become. So let your attention land on the back of the throat. Gentle contraction. Arms to the side, inhale. Keep that noisy breath going as you also exhale. Inhale, looking up. And exhale, your step or jump back into plank. Keep that exhale alive as you lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Let's take an inhale on the right foot forward. Left foot turns out. Exhale, palms together. Unfurling, rotating, inhaling, spreading your wings. Exhaling the palms back to the centre. Inhaling, spreading your wings. Exhaling to the centre. One more. Now, are you really tuned into that breath? Resonating. Are you really tuned in? Hope so. Inhaling. Exhaling. Back into plank. Keep exhaling strong and smooth. Fresh new breath. Inhale, cobra. Fresh new sequence as we move into down dog on an exhale. From down dog, you're taking your left foot forward. Turn the back foot out. Inhale. Exhale, palms together. Okay, you know what to do now. Breath in. Breath out. I'll be quiet. Two more. Cultivate your own pace. Next inhale, reach the arms up and fold over. Back into plank. Inhale for cobra. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, step or jump. Last round, about to conclude. Exhale and fold and soften. Come all the way up. And palms together. Let your breath return to its natural, osculating, undulating motion. We're going to come down into bridge pose again. Maybe land on your perch, support with your fingertips. Maybe stretch forward, point your index finger forward with your 
fingers linked. And if you can avoid using your arms to lie down, doesn't matter if we crash down as long as we don't hurt ourselves. And here we are in bridge pose. So come with me on bridge by tucking your tailbone away and lengthening it away from you as you lift the hips off the ground. So really tilt that pelvis towards the face, lengthen away with your tailbone. And slowly come back down. And we're going to introduce that along with a rhythm, a rutam with the breath. Inhaling. Pelvis floats high. Exhaling. Pelvis softly lands. Let's just stretch out our legs for a moment and consider this. Uh, deep breathing. We associate deep breathing um, in a very kind of childlike way with sort of filling the lungs and puffing out the chest, almost it's all being very regimented and uh, something that we ought to do every day is breathe deeply. That's certainly a very sort of, um, that's a healthy view actually. Um, sort of older generations tend to sort of adopt that uh, kind of deep breathing, good for you. Um, and that's totally correct. The, the added element, I suppose, with yoga is to cultivating a long exhale, okay? Um, and the exhale is associated with a, a kind of a, a fresh new start, clearing things away for a fresh new start. And it also uh, helps cultivate a clear mind as well. So when we breathe in using yujai, it's long, it filters in, the, the, the breath is expansive. Just try it now. And then as we sort of let the breath turn in its own time and then we exhale. It's almost more powerful than the inhale because when we breathe deeply, we kind of almost let the exhale collapse. But when we use our contraction with the back of the throat and let the exhale, we're with it, we're with it, we're still with it, we're still with it. And it, it doesn't really peter out. It just reaches that turning point like a wave again. Lecture over. Practice is uh, paramount. So we're lifting our hips off the ground with our feet close to our hips and we allow our arms to drift back this time. Fingernails touch the floor behind us. Exhale, coming back down nice and slowly, timed with the breath rather than me. So keep going with this. Do you remember the bridge pose we did last week? We rolled the thighs in towards each other. It became quite strong. And the chest, of course, is moving towards the chin. And the back of the neck feels long. The back of the body feels strong. Now, once we've established the rhythm, we can then tune into the Yujai breath. Contract the back of your throat. And follow this lovely, you found strong, slightly slower, but very much stronger breaths. Your attention is on your breath. Where we lie, our attention, we become.
Just keep going with that for another two or three rounds. Just perfect that coat I gave you. Yeah. Whatever we place our attention on, that we become. Where we place our attention is a decisive factor in how we experience the world we live in. In this endeavour, we enlist the help of the breath. Now this is, as you slowly make your last exhale in this pose, a sort of end to this little flow that we've done. Draw your knees up towards your chest. Thank you, George Forstein, the Shambhala Guide to Yoga, for that quote. But the first bit of it, whatever we place our attention on, that we become, is a piece of wisdom first expressed in the ancient Upanishads. Yeah, wonderful. Let's roll on to one side or roll up forward and into cat pose. Take a couple of movements in cat. Land on that Yujai breath once again. Experience that lovely strong exhale that stays with us. And let's drop down onto our elbows and our tummies. Okay, from the Sphinx pose, I'd like you to fold into your knees, rock the knees from side to side. We can maybe just tilt the ear from side to side as well, make it a little bit more kind of spiralling up the body. Good. And then we're maybe going to hold this now. Sometimes we might we might want to push away with the hands and move into the cobra pose. Now, let's draw the chin towards the chest a little bit. But some of you might want to take the chin in the opposite direction, almost as if we're bringing the soles of the feet to the back of the head. So feel that lovely warm openness in the throat. Excellent. And then as you lower your elbows down, take your hands in line with your chest. Keep your toes tucked under as you fold back into swan pose. Slightly come into a, a long cat and then tuck your toes under. Um, they're already under, aren't they? Lift your knees for down dog. Okay. Pigeon pose now. Let's flip the right toes over so the toenails on the right side are moving down into the mat. You're starting to soften into that right knee. And we're going to slide our right knee forward. Push back with this foot, even lift it and drop it down. So you've got a long pigeon tail. Good. Okay. Again, we're thinking about collarbones wide and bringing the chin towards the chest. Releasing into the hips, but with this wonderful open feeling and activity around the throat. As you just keep softly landing your attention back on your usual breath. Okay, come with me. We're going to... Take our body weight forward and place our hands in front of our knees. So our hip is now above our right knee. The left leg is long. Just lifting off with the left leg a little. And then tucking and swooping the left knee through all the way so that you're now got the left foot forward and you're in a very um, narrow lunge. Stepping into a forward bend, taking an inhale with the arms 
out to the side. And let's fold our right knee back. Sorry, right knee. Catch hold of the foot or the trouser leg if you can and drift your opposite arm up. So this is a nice, relatively straightforward quad stretch. And then place that foot back. Inhale both arms up, exhale come into a forward bend. Stepping back once, stepping back twice into downward dog pose. Flipping over the toes on your left foot, bending into your knee as you slide your left knee forward. Slide away with a long pigeon's tail, flip the toes over. Maybe use the tripod fingertips. Heels of the hands can also be down if you've got nice long arms. And collarbones wide, chin drawing in. Pigeon pose. Breath feels very settled, I hope, now. As we start to take our body weight forward, take our hands forward, and slide so that your left hip settles above your left knee. And then just swinging the right leg open into the back of the knee, lifting the toe. And then drawing the knee all the way forward. You're again in a narrow stance. This time your right foot is forward. Coming into a forward bend and encouraging a release of the upper body. Take your arms out to the side to come all the way up to standing. And it's your left foot that you're folding back now. If you want to work a little stronger, bend into your left elbow and allow your right arm to float up. Wonderful. So bringing everything back to Tadasana, drift your arms up, exhaling, folding, stepping back once, stepping back twice. Okay, we'll do that again, but this time there'll be a couple more kind of exciting things in there. So let's start by taking our right knee forward. So we'll go back into pigeon pose, flipping back the opposite foot, steadying ourselves in this pose. Some of us might want to tilt our weight forward, fold into the left knee, so the foot is now lifted. Come back up so that you're holding this pose with the hamstrings doing quite a lot of work on your left side. You can help that out a little. If it's within reach, if it's not, don't worry by catching hold of the top of the left of the foot. And this is the king pigeon pose. Draw the chest and the chin towards each other. Widen the collarbones. Quiet in our listening. Good stuff. Now release and allow the leg, the left leg to float away. Same again, you're taking your hands forward of your knee, tuck your back to under and just ease that hip above the knee. Lift into your back leg, draw it all the way forward and through so the left foot settles in front of you. You're in almost like a runner's starting position. Now, you might want to have a look. You can either come into a forward bend or take your left hand quite wide and tripod your fingers. And then maybe you want to come into a one-legged forward bend. Now, we can either keep the leg suspended there or we can reach back and have a little opening by opening the knee on the right side. This is entirely optional. You might be here. 
You might be here with both hands on the ground, or you might have your right hand behind you caught, catch, caught hold of the foot with the knee opening. This is known as the candy cane pose. Now, whichever version you are in, we're going to come up to standing on both feet. Really well done. Hands to hips as you transfer your weight onto your right foot. No, your left foot. I keep getting this wrong. It's the right foot that's folding back. Turn your attention from the breath to a visual point ahead of you now to help with your balance. Allow your left arm to drift up. And rather than tilting at the hips, I want you to soften into your standing leg. For dancer pose, we're going to allow the right heel to drift away from the body. The chest is moving towards the chin. The front of the body is nice and open. The left arm is moving into the space behind your ear. Come with me again as you lower your left arm. Swing your right knee forward. Take your two fingers and place them inside the big toe and the second toe. Hand, left hand to hip. And then lower both feet to the ground. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Step back into downward dog. Just have a moment to deepen your knees, draw in your tummy and lift your tail. You might even want to just gently rock the hips from side to side. And you can just stay here for a second or two. Such a dry day, isn't it, with all that wind? So we're going to... Repeat that to the other side. You might find that you'll enjoy it better on this side. As you flip over the left toes, bend into your left knee and glide it forward for a pigeon pose. Push back with the opposite leg. This is your plain vanilla wood pigeon, if you like. Now, the pigeons, they're quite kind of obvious when you spot them in the garden. They've got a slightly kind of regal look about them. Their um, chests are obviously kind of quite pronounced, but a little bit of a gap, um, long necks, and this is what we're looking for here. The back of the neck being particularly long and the chest moving towards the chin. So it's not a sweeping movement at all, it's a very subtle movement. Now again, we might want to take our body weight forward. Plant your hands low, fold into the back leg, lifting up. So quite a strong contraction with your right hamstring. If you want, reach forward with your right hand, swooping all the way around, catching hold of the foot and settling into King Pigeon. If this isn't available, that's okay. There are the earlier versions that you can stick with. Perfectly fine. We're on our own little journey here. Good. Let's release into that back leg. Let's place our hands a bit forward of your left knee. Take your body weight forward, but this time come into a high knee. Hip is above your left knee. You can drift your right leg back. Swing down, swing low, and then bring the foot forward. Nice, narrow stance. We're coming either into the one-legged forward bend. So if you want a little reminder, so just come into a plain vanilla forward bend if you know that that's what you're doing. Otherwise, come with me. Take your right fingertips quite far forward. It's quite a big surface area for you to balance within. And then... We start to tuck our back toe under and lift the knee and float the heel towards the bottom so that you're bending into your left knee. Now that is stage two. 
So your both hands are in front of you. Maybe they're slightly steepled. If you want, you can start to turn out the left hip, the left knee. You can reach back. And if it's available to you, you can catch hold of the left foot. And you can think about lifting the chest and opening the knee. Back down you go. If whichever version you've been in, come back to standing, drift your hands above your head. And then we're coming all the way down into a forward bend. Again, you can either come down to sitting or you can do this funny little squat and you can roll all the way down. Now, if you've got a wall, I'd like you to go to the wall and stick your hip quite close to that wall and then swing your legs up. Have the back of your hands resting onto the floor with the palms facing up. And this is known as the Triti Karini. And lift your shoulders. I'll maybe just wait to a second or two because maybe you've got to clear some space. If you don't have a wall space to work with, maybe a settee, a bed or a chair, uh, maybe even a table, or you can simply drift your legs up from where you are. Now let's work back into, well not work back into actually, that's a ridiculous phrase. Let's just turn our attention back to the throat. Now to help us along, lift your shoulders off the mat Place your hands behind your head very casually and then just draw the elbows together so that you're really stretching across in a horizontal manner through the shoulders. Keep the chin drawed, drawing in as you gently settle the shoulders back down and then the head. Take the hands out of the way and bring them down towards your waist. Maybe we want to stay here and simply listen to the lovely cultivated ocean breath that you've created in the throat centre. Can you just resonate with all the space there and of course the sound? Now, one or two of you might be very happy to stay here, but some of you might want to just have one more asana tonight. Tonight, <laughs> today, bend your knees and plant your feet onto the mat. Start to lift your tailbone off the mat. And as you do so, start to walk your feet up the wall. As you walk your feet up the wall, squeeze and rock once or twice right to left to get the heels of your hands just above the waist, maybe up quite close to the bottom of the ribs. Can you lift one leg up and can you lift both legs up? It doesn't matter which version we're doing. And we're lifting the hips above the shoulders and we're drawing the chin towards the chest. The back of the neck is, of course, long. Sarvangasana, shoulder stand. It's really unusual pose where the shoulders can release into the ground. To come out of this, start to slide your hands down towards your waist. Bend one knee, plant one foot back on the wall, plant the other foot back on the wall. 
and slowly descend to earth. If you want to, you can stay here with your legs up the wall for today's relaxation. But if you are nowhere near a wall, then I'd encourage you to acknowledge that this is now relaxation. And you can bring the feet down to the earth. I'm going to encourage you to listen to the soft sound of your breathing in Yujai Ocean Breath once again. So turn your attention again to the throat centre. Without any force, gently contract the back of the throat. Just allow the breath to almost sing over your vocal cords. On the inhale, on the exhale. Another twice. Stick with it. And then allow your breath to return to its natural, rhythmic, osculating, very natural manner. I'm going to read to you today from George Forstein's book, The Shambhala Guide to Yoga. And he quotes Swami Rama. Who says this? The breath is the flywheel that regulates the entire machine of the body. Just as the control of the flywheel of an engine controls all other mechanisms in it. The guide of the external breath leads to control of the gross and subtle physical and mental aspects of our life machine. Whatever we place our attention on, that we become. Our attention is a divisive factor in how we experience the world we live in. In our yoga endeavour, we enlist the help of the breath.
And if you have your legs up the wall, it is a wonderful place to be, especially on a warm day. So feel free to stay there. But if you want to simply start to move the knees towards the chest, and if you're against the wall, you may find that you're a little bit kind of jammed there, but don't worry. You can just simply ease yourself back a little bit, slide your hips away from the wall if you can, roll onto one side. If you're just lying on your yoga mat, start to move the body, roll onto one side and slowly come up to sitting. Linking your thumb and your index fingers together, we're going to finish with three Brahmari breaths. We're going to make the sound of the bee. And you can be any size of bee you want. You can be a little tiny bee, a squeaky kind of bee, or you can be a, a big bumblebee with a nice deep bass tone. We practice bee breath on the exhale. I'll do the first one, you join in, and then do the second two in time with me or in time with your own breathing. A breath in, and as we exhale softly through the lips. Last one. As your breath settles to normal, it's quiet in your listening, the inner sound. Almost palpable. Space around the throat, open and light. Well done, everyone. Thank you for joining in today's yoga, whether you're here live or whether you join in and catch up. It's 40 minutes for you. Thank you. Our seat of communication, expression, but also inner listening. Thank you. So I'll see you next week. Have a lovely day. Have a great week. And yeah, Place your attention on something that you want to become. It's an ancient saying, but it's common sense, like a lot of things. When we spend time in nature, when we look at a blue sky, we almost become that, don't we? So it's where we foster our attention um, is important. We have these choices, don't we? We've got a kind of automatic, habitual things that, we sometimes need to just turn our attention to something else. So you've done that. You came to yoga. Well done. See you next week. Thanks again. Well done.